So we've seen that if we want to calculate how something starts or stops rotating, we use the fact that the torque is equal to the rate of change of the angular momentum. Now for a single mass moving in a circle, the angular momentum, or the magnitude of it, is just equal to mv r. But usually we're not dealing with a single point object moving in a circle, we're dealing with something solid, like say a rotating wheel or a rotating planet. If the planet is spinning around its axis or the wheel is spinning around its axis, what's the angular momentum of that? We need to know this to be able to work out how much torque we need to apply to speed it up, how much torque we need to apply to slow it down. Now if you do have some complicated shape, and we have its axis here that we're rotating about, what we could do is divide into pieces. For each little chunk, we can work out how far that chunk is from the center, and how fast it's going, and the angular momentum of that little bit is m of that little bit vr, and we'd sum that over the whole object, adding up the mvr for the spit, for the spit, for the spit, for the spit. We can simplify things a little bit because the velocity of an object will vary, of course, the things furthest from the axis will spin faster, but everything in a rigid body has the same angular velocity omega. And if you remember, the linear velocity v equals omega r. So we can change that sum, so the total angular momentum, equals the sum of m v r, and we can replace v with omega r, so it's m omega r squared. Now, how do we work that out? Well, the answer is calculus, by and large. We do an integral over the solid body, and add up all the little squares, work out the mass in each square, how far it is from the center the axis squared, multiply it all by omega, which is a constant. So we can rewrite this as the angular momentum is equal to omega times the sum m r squared integrating over the entire body. Now this sum or integral has a name. It's called the moment of inertia and is written as a capital I. Now, if you look in the textbook, you'll see numerous examples of how to do this integral. However, in practice, you virtually never need to do this. What you can do is just look up tables. There are tables of moments of inertia already pre-calculated for pretty much any shape you're ever going to want to deal with. The moment of inertia, because it depends on mr squared, two things of the same mass can have a big moment of inertia if most of the mass is towards the outside and less if it's towards the inside. If you have something like a weight on the end of a string, or something like a bicycle wheel where most of the weight is around the outside and the middle is quite empty, then the moment of inertia is approximately mr squared. If on the other hand you have a solid wheel, more like a car wheel, where there's mass all the way to the middle, in that case more of the mass is closer in, so the sum is going to be less, so it turns out to be about a half m r squared. Whereas if you have something like a sphere, a ball, a solid ball, then even more of the mass is going to be close to the axis, and the moment of inertia is in fact only two fifths m r squared. And so on for different shapes. You can have rods rotating around one end, rods rotating around the middle. These are all, all can be found in tables. And often if you have a more complicated situation, you can just treat it as a sum of individual objects. For example, uh, Thor's hammer. If you wanted the moment of inertia of that, you could just treat it as a rod rotating around one end. Uh, the moment of inertia for that is one third mr squared plus a point object at the end with just its mr squared and add them all together. So the moment of inertia is equal to the angular velocity times the sum the moment of inertia.